Welcome to Morning Matter with Pastor Steve Mary. Today's topic, life is too short to be angry. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was this not my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before thee unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, so to anger, and great of kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore, now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? Jonah 4, 1 through 4. The story of Jonah is one of the most famous of the stories in the Bible. It ranks right up there with Noah and the Ark, Daniel and the Lion's Den, Joseph and the Coat of Many Colors, and the Prodigal Son. Who can forget the disobedient prophet who specifically goes in an opposite direction than which God told him? This story has everything in it. It has a rebellious prophet running from God, little boats and big storms, big waves and a big fish. That fish was a sort of school for Jonah. Although he didn't quite learn as much as he should have learned, it still became a classroom for him. And watch this, for the most of us, we also will attend a fish university too. There are lessons of faith, virtue, humility, patience, obedience, and courage that we'll all have to learn there. We may not be swallowed by a literal fish, but there will be whales that goes by other names to teach us things. Big fish called sorrow, failure, defeat, poverty, and even bereavement. Jonah went in and preaching a great message of judgment. He was saying that if this place doesn't repent, God is going to destroy Nineveh. The scripture says that the king traded his royal robes for sackcloth and ash and called a total fast of the nation. But when Jonah saw this, it infuriated him. He really expected God to not have mercy on them, but rather wipe them out. When God doesn't meet his expectation, it angers Jonah. So Jonah slips off into the wilderness and watches, being angry and upset at the goodness of God. Child of God, anger and selfishness will narrow a man's spirit as nothing else will. Can I remind you that life is too short to live angry and bitter? The scripture reminds us in Proverbs 16 verse 32, He that is so to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Now what is the source of anger? Anger can come out of anywhere and nowhere. When we are delayed in traffic, when you're around someone who always thinks they're right, when you find out about somebody criticizing you, when your pay doesn't meet your expectations, when you're accused of something that you did not do, Life is full of frustrations, and if you're not careful, they can turn you into a very small person. The Bible is full of men who allow their anger to get the best of them, and they pursued others to literally take their life from them. We see Saul pursuing David, Sokath after Gideon, Korah after Moses, and the Pharisees after Jesus. Anger can destroy every relationship that you've ever had around you. What are some of the things that we can do to help preventing us from being angry? Well, here are just a few. Avoid chronically angry people. They are people that when you get around them, they tax your spirit. It is not before long before they say things that can set you off in a direction that you wouldn't normally go. You need for your own benefit to cut these people off. Next, take time to cool off. Thomas Jefferson once said, if you are angry, then come to 10. If you are real angry, then count to 100. In other words, there is something important about cooling off. Sometimes you have to just walk away. Hey, you might even use some of that energy and cut a tree down. <laughs> if we're not careful in these situations where we are terribly angry, we can say things that will set on fire a relationship to the point of it being irreparable. And lastly, choose to forgive. There's an old saying that says, keep short accounts. This means that when you owe some money, you try to pay it off as quickly as you can. You will have to live your life in that way. People make you angry, disappoint you, hurt you. But at the end of the day, there must be some forgiveness that you extend to them. Perhaps I could say not so much for their sake as for yours. Matthew 6 tells us, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. How long will you allow anger to get the better of you? 
How much longer are you going to let the anger get the best of your relationship with God? How much longer are you going to let your angry words keep beating down your husband, beating down your wife, beating down your children or the ones you love? There is only one solution. Repent and be healed. The thought of the day, a soft answer, turn it away wrath, but grievous words serve anger. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated. We make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.